technology for computer graphics. I eventually, you know, got, I guess I got bit by the bug when, um, when I worked at this one production house and a couple of the guys that, that were in my department went to film school and, um, and they, you know, they, they were doing shorts and features on the Panasonic TVX100. And <clears throat> when I first saw the, the image quality and when I first saw that, you know, filmmakers could obtain that image, you know, uh, and it was readily available, that's kind of how I got, got into it. You know, I wanted to do what these guys were doing. Um, and I wanted to learn some of, the, some of the stuff that they learned in film school. You have to find a way to make money all the time when you do this and, and figure out how to funnel it into, into your craft, whether it's buying new equipment or uh, you know, hiring crew or hiring uh, talent. You know, just find a creative way to put that money you know, into you know, and really educate yourself on how to produce stuff because that's where you're gonna, that's where you're gonna see the, you know, the, um, the results on screen when you when you educate yourself and you really manage what your um, financial status is and how you can apply that to your workflow. And like I said, it's there's no one size fits all when it comes to managing your finances and, and knowing when to, you know, when to pull the trigger. I met Steve. Um, like in 2007, and he saw some videos that I shot for Ali Vegas, and um, and he tried to reach out to me, and there were uh, a couple of instances where the people that we were with um, sort of tried to tried to block that relationship. Like they, you know, um, the people that I rolled with at the time uh, didn't really tell me. You know that that Steve was reaching out to me, so we were, um, so you know they would they would basically you know say like what's your budget and you know you know we need to know your budget before you can speak to him and all this crazy stuff that I I had no idea they were doing. So Steve initially thought that I was like really rude and like you know stuck up and like who is this guy like to to act like that. So um, luckily. Uh, mutual friend, a DJ, Superstar J, uh, told him that, yeah, Rick's not like that, you know, like, that's a bad first impression. So we ended up, he ended up uh, setting up a meeting and I went to Steve's office and then um, I showed him, you know, just my reel and the stuff that I was working on. And, you know, and it was all, like I said, it wasn't um, hip hop related. It was all like, for like rock bands and, and different shorts that I was doing. And, and narrative stuff, and uh, and he saw that stuff, and he um, he was really, you know, he, he just was watching it, and he was just like enamored by by this work. And it was, again, it was a couple years ago. It was before like there were a lot. Everyone was, you know, there was a lot of this kind of output on the internet. It was just like, you know, it, it was just the stuff that I loved doing on the side. And uh, and then I remember the first time he. Um, I think that day uh, he put me into a meeting with like disturbing the peace and like and he was just like you know show him the last video you did and he didn't actually see the video that I had just cut you know he just kind of like blindly put me into this meeting and said you know this is the guy and uh, and so because he did that <clears throat> because he had this blind faith in me it was like we got really close because it was kind of cool so I really I always look at that day as like sort of how me and Steve got started and that's how we kind of apply that thinking to our business with some of the directors that we work with now and um, and just kind of give them that blind faith and that you know that support like you know here's the situation but you know it's, it's you it's all you and it's how you want to do it.